Hey, gonna walk you through how to create a company logo with Stable Diffusion for free in your Google CoLab notebook. Uh, so this is the Stable Diffusion uh, Google CoLab. Um, they set this up so you can kind of run this in the Google environment. You don't need to, you know, download anything onto your computer. Uh, so it's much easier to run, and it also gives you a free GPU, which is like a specialized computer that's like very good at running this type of thing quickly. So I'm just gonna click. Uh, create a copy to drive and uh, then that's going to create a copy. It's just creating a copy right now. It might take a couple of minutes. Okay, a copy is created and we're basically just going to go through this uh, setup process here. So. Um, now we have this copy, we can call it whatever I want. Um, it's, this is ours now. Um, and uh, we can first run this. Uh, it says it requires higher RAM. Don't worry about that. Um, uh, okay, I'm just gonna get rid of any other, any other sessions, whatever. Um, so hopefully this will run now to connect, okay. Uh, so that is connecting, uh, just to make sure that you're doing this the right way. Um, you can just go to change runtime type. So you see this hardware accelerator GPU. That's, um, that's what you need to make sure is set to GPU. Okay. Now we're connected. Um, and it says we've got this computer set up here. Okay. So, cool. so now we can run this. Okay. That's run fine. Um, and then we're just going to go through and run these in turn. Um, so, uh, as this is running, you might want to set up a hugging face, um, uh, an account. Uh, so, uh, in order to do this, um, you need to go open this model card up here. Um, and you can see I'm, I'm logged in, uh, to hugging face. Uh, but if you're, if you're not logged in, um, you'll see something like this. Um, there we go. Uh, let's see the model card. And then, uh, once you sign up, it will kind of ask you to approve, uh, that model card. Um, so once you've done that, um, then, uh, then you should be good, um, in order to run it. Okay. So, so that's run. Okay. And then we're gonna, um, create this, uh, we're just gonna run this as uh, so that lets you kind of customize the output widgets. And then this is gonna log you into Hugging Face. Okay, so um, once you have a Hugging Face account, you can click on that. And then you see I have this token here, you can click copy token, uh, or if you need to create a new one, just name it and change it to write and generate the token. Um, but I've got that one here, um, so I can copy that and then paste it in there and then click login. Um, and that will give you this error, but you don't need to worry about that. Um, if, if you get this error, then you know it's it's working. Cool. So uh, now we just need to download all the kind of model stuff. Uh, don't worry too much about what's happening here. It's basically downloading this stable diffusion model from Hugging Face, uh, which is kind of like a um, you know platform that like holds all these models and data sets uh, that you can use. Um, so lots of really cool stuff on there, and uh, you know it's free to use as well. Um, so. Uh, so a really, really good way to get started with AI. Okay, so this is downloading. Um, the next thing we're gonna have to do once it's downloaded is um, set up this pipe. Um, so this is basically how it runs everything on the GPU rather than like on a normal computer. Um, and like I said before, GPUs are kind of optimized to do uh, AI really well. Um, uh, and uh, normally they're very expensive to buy, like you know, thousands of dollars. So uh, really cool that Google offers this for free. Although, um, you know, they are starting to try and get people to upgrade to the pro version. So I don't know how much longer this will be free. Okay. So it's downloading all this stuff here. I'm just going to take a little bit of time. I'm just going to pause it while it's downloading. Okay. That only took a few minutes to download. Um, and then I'm just going to run this, uh, pipe. Um, so, uh, when you're running these things, you need to click play, uh, or what I'm doing is pressing shift and enter, uh, when I'm selected in this, uh, code. Uh, so, uh, now we are ready to create our first image. Um, and 
Uh, in order to create an image, we just need a few things. One is the prompt. So this, this is the prompt that gave you a photograph of an astronaut riding a horse. Uh, and then it uses this with autocast thing uh, to basically uh, run this on the GPU uh, where it will run faster. Um, and then it's going to grab the image and then save uh, the image. Um, uh, or you can um, you know, display it here because we're in Google Collab. So let's try this and see what we get. So what it's doing is uh, doing diffusion. Uh, so uh, the way this works is it's starting with a completely random noisy image, um, and then it's kind of running uh, an encoder that um, that basically kind of denoises the picture. So like if you ever restored an old photograph, um, it denoises it, and then um, it's trying to basically um, uh, denoise it in a way uh, that it matches uh, this prompt. Um, so it has like another piece that says, does this match a photograph of an astronaut riding a horse? And if it doesn't, then it will keep kind of moving in that direction until you get something like this. Cool. So uh, it actually, you know, worked. We have a photograph of an astronaut riding a horse. Um, and you can do this in uh, DALI, uh, which is uh, the OpenAI version. Um, but because um, Stable Diffusion is is open source, it's free uh, pretty much to run it. So, um, you know, obviously you can pay more for more compute power. Uh, if you throw more compute power at it, the images get better, uh, but it's pretty cool uh, to just try it out in here. And then um, if you do wanna use a paid version that's maybe a bit more accurate, then uh, you could use uh, DALI uh, after you've kind of figured out what props work. Um, so uh, now in this uh, section, we're gonna use a manual seed um, and what manual seed does is it mean this kind of starts the uh, um, uh, the prompt at, like it starts the noisy image at a certain kind of uh, level of random noise, um, and that means that if anyone who runs the same seed and the same prompt will get the exact same image every time. So before you saw that image of uh, an astronaut riding a horse, um, whereas like this one came up with a new image when we ran it. This one should bring us back the exact same image. So this is really useful. Yeah, here we go. It's the exact same image. So this is really useful for reproducibility. Um, and all you need to do is kind of set the generator here and then push the generator in um, to the pipe like that. Cool. Uh, the other thing we can do um, is uh, kind of choose how many steps. So like, I think the default is 100, uh, but you could set it to be less or more. Um, so this is still setting that manual seed, uh, like we said before, it's the exact same image, uh, but we're doing it with less steps. Um, and that's where you can kind of see, um, you know, just how compute makes a big difference uh, to the problem. Um, it also takes less time to run if you have less steps. Um, so I play around with that and kind of get an intuition for, um, you know, how much kind of computing power is needed to get the quality that you need. Cool, so uh, the other thing we're gonna do here is just generate three different images at once. Uh, so this is just a function that they've given you to create a grid. Um, and then uh, when you run it, uh, you can get you know, three different images now. So it's basically running it one, two, three uh, different images um, and just gonna uh, come out uh, the other side and um, you know, put three different images out there. So uh, this is uh, what you kind of expect from Dali or Mid Journey or um, any of the other um, you know, crayon if you use that, um, because they, they give you like a grid of images and this is doing the same thing. Uh, just gonna pause while that's running. Cool, so that took 40 seconds to run and you can see some are much better than others. Like, you know, this looks like a video game. You know, this doesn't have a horse in it, but this one looks great actually, like a really cool picture. Cool. Um, and then you can create like as many images as you want. Like this is uh, running it, I guess, for 12 images. Uh, so quite a few. Um, so, uh, you know, that's going to take a long time to run. Probably not going to do that. Um, so, um, you know, and, and there's obviously like more you can do. Uh, this uh, tutorial keeps going on, tells you like, how to change the height and width if you want. Uh, these have to be divisible by eight, just to let you know, you run into an error otherwise. Um, it also explains a lot more about how the model works, uh, which is interesting. Uh, but we're here to do a job, which is to create a new company logo. 
Um, so uh, let's do that. Um, and we're gonna you know, take this and we're just gonna, um, here we go, do, uh, copy the cell and then uh, paste the cell again. Don't need to import torch anymore. Um, we're, we're not gonna do this generator, uh, so we're not gonna um, set a random seed. Um, actually, let me set a random seed just so you can get the same image as me if, if you want to use it for some reason. Uh, cool, and number of inference steps, we're gonna dial this up to 200 um, because uh, we want to uh, get like a pretty good uh, quality image. Okay, so um, I found it, uh, probably the most you can get it to is like 250. I think when I do 300, it starts to complain at me. Uh, I need to use a bigger computer probably. Cool, so um, what do we want? Uh, so we have a shaving brand called Ultra and um, it's a men's grooming brand. They, they do um, shaving foam, deodorant, and uh, we want to create a new logo for them. So, um, you know, we can say uh, new logo for, what's it, new company logo, logo for um, men's shaving brand. Ultra, um, and we could see uh, what that comes back with. Let's see what we get. Okay, uh, that only took uh, a minute to run, and we got a pretty cool logo actually. <laughs> um, one thing you'll notice is that the words uh, never make any sense uh, unless you're using tons and tons of inference steps. This is just a you know, a problem with the model in general as uh, you get the same thing in Dali as well. Um, uh, but like, that's not what we want. We want this logo here. And what you can do is, uh, you know, now you can uh, kind of uh, save the image if you want. Uh, so we can take that code um, up here, yeah, image save. Um, and then, so if you like this, you can say, uh, Ultra logo, and then um, in your files, it's going to show up in theory. Um, okay. Oh, here we go. Now it's there. Cool. And then you can just download that and you get it on your local computer. Um, and then uh, what, what I think this is really good for is just ideation. Like it probably won't be the final version, although in theory you could use that. It depends on how, um, you know, how early stage your brand is, like how, how much of a quality you need. Uh, but you can kind of drop this into Photoshop or Figma, kind of edit out the words, and then you've got like the logo that you need and kind of work on it from there. Uh, so um, the really cool thing here is that um, you, as a non-technical, like non-design, uh, non-creative person, uh, you can actually create your own logo uh, for free uh, and, and you know, try lots of different styles until you find what you like. And then um, and then go use a human, right? Like uh, it's gonna be much easier brief for the designer um, if you just say, this is what I like, can you make like a better version of this? Um, uh, then uh, that's going to save them doing tons and tons of legwork, just trying to second guess what you want. Because now you can visually show them uh, the style that you need. Uh, so uh, should you know bring down the cost of working with the designer by you know 10x. All right, hopefully that was useful.